So in this one, we're gonna be using the Python shell a little bit to kind of connect with our project better. Um, the Python shell allows us to test things a little bit faster than trying to use the admin. Um, and also it's the Python shell. So we, we get a lot to do with Python stuff in there in general. So let's go ahead and close it out. Now, normally you would just type Python and it would open up the Python interpreter, uh, but we need the full on Django project in there. So let's get out of that Python and we'll do, make sure you're in the root of the project and we'll do Python manage.py shell. So this is allowing us to use our Django project specifically um, already in there, right? So if I import things in here, uh, I will be able to actually use them. So uh, let's actually go ahead and look at our model. And what we see here is I wanna actually import this model. So to do that, we have to import from the products app in the models page and then import product. So if I do from products app, dot models import product I can actually import this model and I can work with this model so there's all types of ways to query data from the model one of those main ways is doing products or product dot objects dot all so this is giving me all of the instances of that product model now one to be expected was the CFE shirt right so that's an instance that we created now what we see here is it says CFE shirt. Well, how does it know CFE shirt? And that is from this Unicode right here. So if we change this to CFE, or excuse me, self.price, and we ran, well, if we press up, uh, it's not changing anything. So let's go ahead and exit. And we run the shell again. And now from products.models, import product, and product.objects.all, uh-oh, now we have a string error. So the Unicode has to be a string. So we can turn it into a string. And notice if I make little changes like that, especially on a method, so the fields we can't change, like I've already said, but the methods will be able to. If I make any little change like that, I have to exit and then re-enter uh, because it just of how it works. So from products.models, import product, and now product dot objects dot all and now shows the Unicode there cool so now this means that we can actually go through this data so I'm gonna say products equals to and then I'm gonna set it equal to products dot objects at all and then I can run a for loop so for product in products print product oops sorry lowercase product dot title all right, so that is how we can actually get individual fields for individual instances. So let's actually create some more instances of the product. It's fairly easy to do. We can do product.objects.create and we can set all the different variables. So title equals to some title. Um, oops, I want to make sure I have my string right. I had a single quote here and you need to follow through with a single quote and be consistent. And then I'll do price equals to $39.99. Again, decimal places, it has to match what we've got here. Uh, and then we want to do slug equals to some dash title. And then we don't have to touch the timestamp. We don't have to touch updated. That's all we need. So I can go back. I've got my title, price, and slug. Let's double check. We got title, price, right? So, so those two are definitely required. Slug is definitely required. All right. So now I set my title, price, and slug. Press enter. I got to do product. Let's do that a couple more times. Well, quite a few more times, actually. I'm now making a bunch of instances of the product model. So if I do product.objects, Dot all, I can now see that, hey, look, I have all, a list of all these different products. So if I kept on adding products, this is how you could do it. It's just by pressing up a few times and just keep adding products. Uh, that would be one way to do it. I mean, it's not necessarily the most efficient way, but um, it is at least showing us that, hey, we can actually now see how all these different instances work. So when I save a model, it creates an instance of that model, and then each one of these models is actually unique. 
And the only way they're actually unique, with the exception of the first product, but all the other ones, the only way the exception that they're unique is a ID field that just doesn't show up in your Django model. It just it doesn't show up because it doesn't need to. And it's models.integer field. And it has a, it's auto incrementing. It has a, it has a primary key or it is the primary key. So um, you don't have to know exactly what that is, but let's actually take a look at this. So I'm gonna copy products or product.objects at all again and set it equal to products. Uh, make sure it's products, not product. And then for item in products, lowercase again, I'm gonna print item.title and print item.id and print item dot price. So if I go through, it's gonna take me through all of them. Ah, it's probably not that efficient. So let's try that again. And we're just gonna show the items or the, uh, the IDs, excuse me, item dot ID. So notice that they're auto incrementing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, blah, blah, blah. And these IDs are in every single instance. Every time it's saved, every time you do create, like what we did here, this creates the model and it saves it. Now there's another way to actually create a model and that's by using just the, uh, doing this. So we use, let's say we wanna say new item equals to product, All right? So if I do new item dot ID, it doesn't have an ID because we didn't save it. But if I do new item title equals to, this is the title new item dot price equals to 49.99 new item dot slug equals to ABC slug and then oh whoops I need to make sure that it's a string because otherwise they'll say it's not defined and then new item dot save now that I saved it, that was a way to save it, I could do new item.id again, and it actually created a new ID, and it's right after that one. Um, so that's a way to actually create mo uh, models inside of the Python shell. So you can really test a lot of things out here, and it will also allow us to do all types of stuff, which would include doing our own instance methods. So let's do an instance method so you can see what I'm talking about. So define get price and we'll do self and we're going to return self.price. I'm not going to return the string. I'm going to return the actual price, right? And I'm going to change the Unicode back to self.title. All right. So now that we've done that, we actually have to exit out of the shell and do go back in. So Python manage.py into the shell and then from products.models import product. So products equals or we'll say all products so you don't get too confused products product dot objects dot all and just so you know this is a model manager that is doing this we will see custom model managers later but for now that's what it is so all products it'll have all of them and we can say all products that count to get an idea of how many are actually there. You could also do length of all products, but that takes longer. This is stored in the database. It's a lot faster to use dot count. Okay, so now we want to actually use that method. So we'll do from item in all products, or excuse me, for item in all products, we are gonna do item dot get price. Right, so item dot get price just right there. So it takes in self. So if we use the instance in front of it, that it will use that when it's passing it. So if I hit enter, it now shows me, hey, look, there's a decimal of forty nine nine nine. So if I go four items in all products and then item dot get price times ten, it now shows me the price of that item times ten. Right, so it's still an integer, it's showing decimal. Um, you can use it as, or it's still, it's a decimal, so you can use it as such. Uh, we could turn it into an instance, uh, or we could, we could use these instance methods over and over again. So where this is gonna actually come in handy at some point once we get there is if uh, 
ida or if self dot on sale, then we return the sales price, right? The, this, these are types of things that we would actually work out um, using our instance methods, but I'm gonna undo all that, but just to give you kind of a taste of what's coming. Um, so that's that, um, and we can exit out of the shell, and any of these things that you work on, anything whatsoever, so if we go back into our code and we look at our views, you can test things out for your views. So even like request.user is authenticated, there is a way to test that out um, or to test that the method exists and all this stuff. So there is a way to test these things in the shell. Um, so anything in here, so you can import render, you can also go into the admin and import the admin stuff. You can do all those things to, to test these things um, on your own. So if you find anything on the Django projects website and the documentation that you're just not sure about, you can use the shell to test it out, which is something that I do all the time. And sometimes I just don't remember, so I Google it and it will find it for me and then I'll just test it in the shell or I'll test it on a view and have that thing working correctly. So uh, we'll actually do that later, but for now that's, that's it. That's using the Python shell to actually create models. All right, we'll see you in the next one.